Being a doctor that focuses on patients with scoliosis, I see a whole wide variety of what the effect scoliosis can have on the body. And when we look at scoliosis, um, one common question is, is, you know, I have scoliosis and it's not causing me pain, or I have scoliosis and it's not causing me pain, and what's the real difference and why do we see some patients with way bigger curves with no pain and some patients with way smaller curves and, and, and have a lot of pain? And there's some very clear explanations on why this happens and doesn't. So first of all, what, when it comes to scoliosis and pain, it's not common in adolescents. And that's what most people don't understand is because when scoliosis progresses as an adolescent, it doesn't really lead to pain. But it's very common in patients with adults. And in fact, the, the older they become, the more likely it is to lead to spinal pain and dysfunction with the nerves that come out the spine. So why is there a difference? Well, first of all, we have to understand the progressive factors of each person, meaning an adolescent versus an adult. The, what causes um, progression as a child is something called growth. That means they're growing, they're elongating, is what's causing this curve to get bigger. And since they're growing and they're elongating, there's no compressive forces to the discs, to the tissues, to the nerves, and this lack of compression more than likely doesn't lead to pain. So what happens with a lot of adolescents is that they, they don't take their scoliosis seriously because it's not causing any kind of pain. They say, well, it's not a real problem because it's not causing pain. Well, unfortunately, that's not true. Just because it's not causing pain doesn't necessarily mean it's not an important problem to deal with. And it's not common for adolescents to have pain as a result of scoliosis because growth is what's making them worse. However, they do. there are some kids that do have pain because of scoliosis, but the most common type is mild pain at the site of curve that normally doesn't interfere with their activities, and it may be no different than another kid just carrying backpacks or whatever that would be. So it's not like out of the ordinary type of pain. Okay, and that's because their spine is growing and they're elongating, there's no compression. Okay, so you can have a child with a 100 degree curve and have no pain. In fact, the biggest curve I've ever seen in a child has been 155 degrees, and that child had no pain, nothing, not even dull pain at the site of curvature. So then for, if that's the case, why would I say, Adults with scoliosis very often feel pain. And the reason why is because what causes progression as an adult is not because they're growing, it's gravity. It's gravity, it's causing compression over time. And this leads to slow progression. And this slow progression is compressive because of gravity. And this slow compression causes pain to the nerves and to the discs and, and, and causes pain to the tissues around the spine. This is what causes pain. It's this compressive forces over time. So therefore, you can have an adult with like a 30 degree curve and a child with a 100 degree curve, and therefore the adult would have pain and the child wouldn't. The most common age that adults start to feel pain is around 40-ish or so. So they can go with their first few, you know, maybe the first 10 or 20 years of adult life and feel nothing. And then they start feeling pain around 40 years old because the curve has slowly progressed half a degree or a degree a year or something like that. And now it's gotten to the point where it started causing pain. This also causes an issue because the adult says, well, hey, you know, I've had scoliosis my whole life. It cannot be my scoliosis that's causing pain. So they tend to ignore it and they tend to start thinking it's other things that could be leading to it and they're not dealing with the cause of their problem, which causes further progression. You can see how they lead to more issues. So, and the most common pain that patients or adults tend to feel tends to be low back pain, followed by neck and head pain, and then of course, shoulder pain. Another thing is it starts to affect their lower extremities because we know as scoliosis progresses in the adult, it starts shifting their to something that we call torso pelvic relationship, meaning they no longer are centered. I always call it like the snowman. You know, the snowman is not centered. One, the torso is shifted off to one side. And as the torso is shifted off to one side, it can start affecting their lower extremities, like their hips and their knees and their feet. And they start getting hip problems and knee problems and, their, and, and feet problems. And they think the problems are isolated to those areas, but it's actually a result of their scoliosis, meaning that their scoliosis has caused progression, has progressed, I'm sorry, which has caused asymmetrical wear in their lower extremities and now has caused pain in these areas. And now they start treating these areas and it just keeps spreading because they're not dealing with what's causing it. And that is the alignment of their spine and what's above it. So we know scoliosis in adult cases 
are more likely going to lead to pain. It's more likely going to start happening around 40. And when it starts happening, it's just going to continue to progress and more likely start affecting their lower extremities. Unfortunately, once that starts, there's no expectation to think it's going to stop unless you correct what's causing the problem, and that is the curve progression as a result of the gravitational forces on your spine. That's what you have to deal with. So how do you treat it? How do you actually get patients better? How do you reduce their pain that they're dealing with? Well, first of all, you have to evaluate what's going on, what's happened. If you have any records or, or data regarding any of your x-rays of your scoliosis when you were younger, you want to compare them to what you have right now and see, has there been progression? You know, and what we tend to see is most patients see progression and they never were told that their curve will progress after they were diagnosed as a child, or maybe they didn't even know they had scoliosis. They say they have scoliosis, don't worry about it. They never told them a size, but when we do a deep analysis, we see curves have progressed. And the older the patient becomes, the faster it can progress. It can actually be very scary at how quickly this can change. So first of all, is evaluate the condition, see what type of progression has occurred. If there has been progression, which most cases I find that there almost always is, you must develop a customized treatment plan to reduce the cause, meaning the size of curve. You can't just treat pain as pain because if you do, what's happening inside the spine is going to continue to worsen and the, it's going to manifest itself somewhere else. The way to customize treatment plan is it must be a coordinated comprehensive, multimodal approach to help reduce the scoliosis. It starts with chiropractic care, very specific in-office in rehabilitation design for scoliosis, home corrective scoliosis exercises, and corrective scoliosis bracing if it's actually needed for that particular patient. And with a combination of these types of therapies and rehabilitations, we can actually stop the curve progressing, deal with the cause, and actually help reduce and eliminate pain. And this is done very specifically to reduce the curve. Reducing the curve produces the result, reducing the pain. We don't treat the patient just to reduce the pain because the pain isn't really the cause, it's more the symptom of something deeper, right? So that's what we want to deal with. Even though we are very concerned about people experiencing pain, but we want to get to the cause of the problem. That's what gets people better. So what advice would I give, give for somebody that's dealing with pain and they have scoliosis, you know what's going on? Well, first of all, you got to research your options. Um, you have to get evaluated, find a professional that focuses on scoliosis and focuses on the progression of your scoliosis and reducing the progression, stopping the curve from getting worse, and actually producing an outcome that's going to reduce the cause of your problem. Second thing, uh, lastly, I'm sorry, is that you would have to put in some time. One thing we know when it comes to scoliosis treatment, it's not a sprint. Right, It is something that you must do, put in the time, because what's causing your curve to progress is gravity. And since we can't eliminate the cause, you have to put in time to resist those forces of gravity over time to help your body heal from the processes that have occurred over your life. So research your options, find a doctor who specializes it, and then put in the time needed to get better. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.